you're in LA. We're going to come to, to the Broadway and the theatre situation, but what is LA's just gone back into a form of lockdown mm -hmm. with all the bars being shut again? What's yes. been the reaction in LA? And is there a general creeping fear about what is happening with the infection rates? Well, the, the theory is that obviously uh, California was one of the first states and govern, the governor, Gavin Newsom, was the first one to kind of shut California down. And everybody was uh, uh, did everything they needed to. Everybody banded together. Uh, Palm Springs, where we are right now, shut down completely. Uh, but then when they started to relax stuff and it opened up, uh, people did go to the beaches. They started doing more things outside, gathering in restaurants. And then we had the spike. But again, shutting the stuff down. Today, everything was just literally shut down. Bars, restaurants, and uh, other uh, gyms and things in uh, uh, Palm Springs in Southern California. And uh, everybody here is following the rules so far okay, because, because they that, know how important it is. So we get, that is interesting because we now have our first re-lockdown in Leicester. Mm. So yes. when, when it's opened up, there is this feeling that when it's opened up, people get used to that. They're not going to like the idea of having to go back indoors. How do people respond where you are to being told, right, stay at home now as much as you can? It depends also, Susanna, where you are in America. There are certain states that are... Re the pe certain uh, groups of people are reacting, uh, shall we say, with passion that they are not going to wear masks. Mm. They are. Uh, they want to be allowed to breathe freely. It's part of their freedom. All of this rhetoric that goes on where they think it's against their constitutional right, when really what we're trying to do is protect vulnerable people, protect other people from ourselves if we, if we were to have it. Yeah. I, I liken it to, and I hope you'll understand when I say this, I liken it to when we had the AIDS epidemic in the gay community in the 80s. We, uh, the, the President Reagan at the time and Nancy Reagan preached that it was not happening as our president now and the vice president are pretending it's not happening. And we as the gay community took it upon ourselves to protect ourselves by, by treating each other like everybody had HIV, everybody was infected. That's the only way to protect. And that's what everybody needs to do with COVID. We have to look at each other in the sense that you may have it, so we need to protect each other. Having you need said to that, wear John, uh, John, you're absolutely right about all that. Having said that, yeah. some of the scenes of the gay pride marches in America, gigantic marches with very little evidence of social distancing. Well, I have to say, I didn't go to any of those, and uh, we did our own little pride thing at home here in Palm Springs. I, you know, I don't agree with people like that. That may be the... I don't know... I, I, Piers, I didn't see any pictures of that. So I'm, if it was younger people, then maybe they are of the attitude that they're not going to get it, which is well, not I think the case. It's, I think it's hard, isn't it? Because it's, as with the Black Lives Matter protests, you know, one of my sons went uh, to a couple of those. And I, I absolutely believe in the fundamental right to protest. But you have to do it safely. Mm -hmm. You have to sure. do it, you know, as you said, uh, with HIV, when everyone, you know, assumed everybody may have it and behaved accordingly. We've got to do that with COVID. But there are many of these protest marches going on or celebratory uh, marches and gatherings, and I don't see much evidence of people being very careful. Right, and I don't have the answer to make the people wear the mask, other than if I were there and I were wearing a mask and somebody wasn't around me, Maybe I'd carry a couple extra. It's like when we used to go to the clubs yeah. in, uh, in, in the 80s and we were protecting ourselves from HIV. You got handed condoms on the yeah. way out of the yeah. clubs at night. So let's hand out masks if you have any extra. Yeah. Give them out to people at these marches. Let's help protect each other. So we have this uh, new local lockdown in various areas. Um, and meanwhile, Broadway has announced that it is closing until at least January next year. Uh, yes. We can, you know, here in the UK, you can go to the pub uh, from Saturday night. You can go and have a meal out. Your children can't go to school in the most part. And you cannot sit in a theatre. Um, yes. Now, this, you know, I know for you that's very important because you're a great lover of theatre and the arts, but also it's your livelihood, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, I, Scott and my husband and I, we're doing OK, but this is the first time I've ever been unemployed in 33 years of of me working in the industry. 
I have friends in the industry, not only in uh, the US, but also in the UK, who are having to move out of their homes, move in with family because they can't afford their mortgages. They can't afford to put food on the table. The money has run out that was given to them by the government. And uh, Oliver Dowden, who's put together this uh, five-step plan, if I can personally say from knowing what it is and what he said about it, to me, it is just rhetoric. There's no time scale. For instance, Broadway said January, possibly 2021. Mm. That gives people a chance to prepare and theater owners and producers to get things set where they can do it in a safe way in January, if at all possible. Whereas the five steps that uh, Mr. Dowden has given doesn't give anybody a timeline. There's no way to plan for anything. And even if you, and if you're gonna say that and it's gonna be ambiguous, the government needs to step in and help. The theater I totally, industry- I totally agree with you, John. I think it's complete woolly nonsense. Mm -hmm. There's no actual detail. There's no meat on the bone here. And, and meanwhile, the theater business is collapsing before our eyes. It it's collapsing. It absolutely, I mean, the West End, uh, to salt figures, uh, the, the, the Society of London Theaters figures, 750, uh, 765 million pounds came in from uh, West End theaters and 1.28 billion pounds in uh, the year 2018 from theaters across the UK. Now, again, I know this from being in the industry for years. If theaters are not allowed to have some sort of uh, opening and allow pantomimes to go or something to happen before Christmas, Christmas and pantomime season is when a lot of theaters around the country make enough revenue in order to survive for the year. And if they don't get to do it and there's no plan, 70% of theatres around the UK are going to be gone. You're, no you're, you're supposed to be in Panto, aren't you, this year? I, and as you say, yeah. I mean, those productions bankroll the rest of the year. When do you find out? And I mean, it sounds like you're not likely to find out. Well, I, again, like planning, you know, when you go out and you're protecting yourself from COVID, act like everybody has it. I'm planning already at the moment that it may not happen yeah. because... There's no plan. There is no uh, uh, steps forward for producers to take in order to make it happen. I'm supposed to be doing Panto in uh, at Bristol, at the Bristol Hippodrome. Now that's an ATG theater, which is uh, you know uh, a very big theater, and ATG have a lot of theaters around the country. But we we need a. Pl I mean, I can't it reiterate it enough, guys. We need a plan I in totally order to agree. make it happen. There is no plan, and you and theaters are all going to go under. This is a very serious situation mm -hmm. in this country, as we're seeing, when even Broadway shuts for a year. This is serious stuff. And I see yep. no commitment from the British government or Oliver Dowden, the, the Minister uh, for Culture. I see no commitment from him which is offering any comfort to people in the theatre business. In fact, quite no, the opposite. Quite, absolutely quite the opposite. There's pe the people are worried. People are scared. And, it, you know... If I can be so blunt, um, you know, Mr. Dowden needs to, you need to pull your finger out and get something done here because although people think it's just actors, oh, they're, you know, people who are just in shows, it's a massive amount of money that is created for, uh, for the tourism industry, for all of the cities around the United Kingdom. I mean, even the West End alone, it's 127 million pounds just in the VAT revenue yep. from a year of theater. So it's, it's a vast amount of money and it's, it's a terrible thing to lose. And a vast amount of livelihoods of people who work, not just, you know, front uh, the actors, but all the people in the production teams and everything else, and all the people who work in the theatres.